Shalom, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Torah Gems. I'm Rob, your host, and this week we're discussing Vayagash, and he approached. In this section of, uh, of the Torah, we're, we're dealing with uh, uh, Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, um, and Pharaoh invites uh, that their whole house, uh, everyone, to come down and stay in Egypt during the famine that is taking place there. The half is in Ezekiel, which is one of my favorite stre- stretches of scripture, and we're, uh, and we're in Matthew. The whole theme is redemption. The whole theme is dealing with um, the different uh, aspects of, of what God's going to do presently and in the future. You see, um, here we see you know Judah pleading for Benjamin, and uh, then we see that in the scriptures it's mentioned that uh, they give uh, Benjamin uh, three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of clothes. Now, Hebraic uh, idiom, uh, we've got uh, you know clothes, buildings, people uh, being um, synonymous in Torah. When you read the Torah, there can actually be uh, you know. Uh, Tahor and Tamei in garments. You're dealing with a clean and unclean in garments as, as well. And those uh, five, uh, I'm looking at it here and I'm seeing that those five changes of clothes are re- representative of five books. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And you've got the 300 pieces of silver when we're speaking of when it's silver, when you see silver, um, that the, the underlying theme is redemption. So he gives them that redemption. So the, the word picture that's being painted um, here is that as Joseph gives this to Benjamin, we're seeing a picture. And, okay. that, and the picture looks like this. You see, um, Joseph's sons are Ephraim and, and Manasseh. And we see, Manasseh. and of course, and you know, see one of the, the names that is assigned to Israel, the house of Israel, is Ephraim. Uh, not going into too much detail on the whole, you know, two houses of Israel thing right now. But what we see is in the end days, as spoke of in the Haftra, that God is going to unify the two houses of Israel, okay? And scripture doesn't speak of uh, the church as being an entity that replaces Israel. This isn't truth. This isn't accurate. Um, in scripture, it talks about the house of Israel and the house of Judah, okay? So in Judah, you've got um, Judah, of course, and Benjamin, and the other ten tribes were dispersed um, um, because of disobedience and, and continually violating God's covenant. Um, the So what we see here is, I see a, a beautiful word picture being painted. In Matthew, we've got the, the, section, the section in the Apostolic Scriptures this week, we see the same thing taking place, okay? We see, you know, that God's plan and, and, and always has been and always will be that redemption, okay? But how will it come about when Joseph reveals himself to his brothers? What, what is Joseph doing here? He's giving Benjamin something. He's giving him redemption and Torah, so what do the, the nations, what are the people who are coming out of the nations, you know, physical or adopted uh, uh, Israelites do? Do we just have only the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach, the redemption that he brought us on the cross, the purchase? Or is there something else? Is there something else that we have on us that makes us identifiable to our brothers? It's Torah. Remember, here the Torah hasn't even been written yet, but God knew from the foundations of the earth what was going to happen, and God knew what he was going to do, and God knew how he would do it, okay? And he didn't do it by us making our choices. You see, right now we're teaching about the redemption of Yeshua HaMashiach, who many on earth at this particular point in time are celebrating the birth of through um, a a syncretistic, that means joining of pagan idolatry worship and godly concept and, and 
truth, um, syncretistic holiday of Christmas. And they're not in the Torah. And the reason that they're not there is because they, they're under the false assumption that they have been set free from that. And that is just not true. They haven't been set free from it. They've been set free to follow it. They don't have to follow it. They get to follow it. It's not a salvation issue. You talk to somebody in the church about Torah, if they can't even spell it, <laughs> they, they, they start to think, oh my God, it's a heaven and hell issue. And that has nothing to do with the world to come. It has to do with how a redeemed people walks out a redeemed lifestyle. So how are we going to reveal, how's Joseph going to reveal himself to his brothers? You're going to see redemption on him, Yeshua HaMashiach, and you're going to see the Torah on him. Praise God. You see also in this section of scripture that they decide to settle in Goshen, okay? And they, he, Jacob makes a point. Make sure you tell them that we're shepherds, okay? Interesting word picture there. We're not going to go into that. But because the shepherds are loathsome. So they go to live with the Egyptians, but they don't go to live with the Egyptians. You see what I'm saying? They try to set up something that will protect themselves. Now, in the future, we see all kinds of fences being built by man, you know, and, and we've seen this in, 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 in Jacob, in Israel's life, where he doesn't trust that God will have a plan. So they make a separation there inside but it's it's it shows you know it shows that they know the difference between an unclean clean and unclean they know the difference between seeing that in joseph's life he separates himself from that okay so we we see that there has been much disobedience up to this point and that there is you know a consequence of that disobedience i mean we know what happens because we've read the story and if we haven't well, we're going to read it, and what happens is they get sold into slavery for 400 years because the Pharaoh dies, the nice guy dies, and then a not-so-nice guy comes in. Is it funny the way it works with Goy? They just, you know, sometimes they, they change their mind just like that. And some of the people of God, come on, well, let's be honest here, we're human, we're living in a fallen body here. So, in the future, we know what's going to happen, and... Yet, God works a miraculous thing through that. And, of course, he brings them out. They end up in Mount Moriah. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm just really excited. We're talking about the prophecy of the 2-6. We're talking about the end times. So, observation this week, the gem, we, I'm looking at, I'm seeing, you're going to be seeing some redemption, and you're going to be seeing some Torah. Yeah, you're going to see two things come together. And those two houses are going to come together. You see the picture of two witnesses. And soon we're going to see the picture of, 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 of the two witnesses on the Ark of the Covenant. Praise God. I hope you're... Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim